Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia of the Call Me Crafty Al YouTube channel and welcome to my stop on the not too shabby Critter Pops Hop and Giveaway. I hope you'll stick around, see what I'm going to create with this month's stamp and die set and find out how you can be entered to win a gift certificate to the not too shabby store. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and ring that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. I'm super excited to be here today to help celebrate the release of the newest stamp and die of the month from Not Too Shabby. This month's Critter Pop stamp set has three adorable Critter Pop sickle images as well as a lot of fun and punny sentiments to go with them. Now you can either get just the stamp set or you can go ahead and get the bundle which comes with the coordinating dies. Now I am pretty sure that this is going to go fast so make sure if you like what you see on today's hop you go ahead and pick this up for yourself. I do have links in the description box below. You can either order one time or you can sign up to make sure you receive it every month and you save just a little bit more. Today I'm going to be using the stamp set and I'm going to be creating some earrings with it. Yes, I said earrings. I thought it might be fun because you know I love these cute images to make something besides a card out of them. As I'm sharing the process, I will tell you more about how to hop along and get entered in this month's giveaway, but why don't we go ahead and take a look at some of the other supplies I'll be using today. I will of course be featuring the stamp set today, and I will be using the cute unicorn critter pop for my earrings. To color my image in with, I got out a rainbow of permanent markers and I got out an alcohol ink marker too, just to give a little bit of pink to the cheeks. For me, both of these coloring mediums have worked, but you might want to practice on your shrink plastic to see what will work for you. Because the shrink plastic is slick and non-porous, I will be using Stays on Jet Black ink. I raided my daughter's jewelry making supplies and I have some fish hook earrings. And what I like about these is instead of needing to use O-rings, there is a little lobster clasp on the bottom. So actually what you could do is make, you know, a set of earrings with each of those images and then you can just, you know, take them off and on the same pair of hooks. And if we're gonna make shrink earrings, we need some shrink plastic material. I'm gonna be using what I had in my stash and mine is translucent. So when it shrinks, it will be white. And I got this probably back when it was copyrighted in 2004. I have had this in my stash forever. Now I will try to link something similar in the description box below, but when you get your material, you might have to switch it up just a little bit from what I do in case there is a slight variance. Now, as I add any other tools or products during the process, I will be sure to let you know in the voiceover. But as always, if I leave you with any questions, you can leave those in that comment section below and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Let's get crafty. We're gonna get started today by doing the stamping. I pre-cut a piece of the poly shrink where I could fit two of my Critter Pops side by side, allowing for room above them for a hole punch later. I am gonna be using my Misty, and every time before I stamp, I will make sure that my piece of plastic is snug down in that lower right-hand corner. Now I am going to use this stays on jet black and it is pretty sticky so it likes to peel up the poly shrink after I stamp it. But the good thing about the Misty is I can just place that piece right back in the corner, especially if I need to re-stamp it. And I did need to add a little pressure to a spot on the stamp before I turned it around and stamped the second one in the same way. 
Although the Stazon is meant to stick to non-porous surfaces and dry correctly, I did set this to the side for 10 minutes before I moved on. The next step is to color in your images before you cut and shrink them down. And because mine will turn out white, I do need to color on the front. If you have clear poly shrink, you could maybe color on the back and not have to worry about the stays on or the stamped area. When I did color mine, I tried my best to stay away from that black line, but I found out that if my marker did pick up some of that, I could just kind of wipe it off to the side and get back to the original color. Now, also on the lighter colors like yellow, I had some of the black ink bleed into it when I was coloring because I accidentally touched it, and I could just easily color back over that area with the yellow marker. It picked up that black stays on ink, which then I could just wipe off on that piece of paper underneath my little images here. While I finish coloring in my images, I thought I would tell you more about the hop and giveaway. One lucky viewer who hops along and follows all of the guidelines will win a $25 gift certificate to the Not Too Shabby online store. This is a hashtag driven hop, so you will click on the hashtag in the title, which is also up on screen now, and it will pull up all of the participating videos. You'll want to watch each one, give it a like, leave them a comment, and then when you're all done, you're going to fill out the raffle copter, which is linked in my description box below. You have until June 13th to enter, and the winner will be announced on the Not Too Shabby channel on June 14th. Happy hopping and good luck in the giveaway! Once I had both of the images colored in, I once again sat this off to the side for about 10 minutes to dry. I do need a hole to clip the earring into, so I need to do that before I shrink it down. I just got out this hole punch of mine, and the side I used, it says 3 16 of an inch. When I went to punch it, I tried to center it right above the unicorn horn, and I had the tip of the metal piece touch the tip of the horn, and then I punched through this easily. I punched the same hole above the second one, and then I brought in my fine tip scissors to cut these out. When I was cutting it out, I left a small border around the stamped image, and I also left that same amount of space around the hole at the top. This way when it shrinks down, there's a little bit of white on the edge, and there is a ring around that hole that will hold my hook in place. Once both of the pieces were colored and cut out, it was time to shrink them down. Now you could always do this in the oven per instructions, but I'll be using my heat tool. To protect my surface, I got out a glass mat, and to help push it down later when it's warm, I got out a stamping block. Now this probably was the most fussy part of it all. The first one was a little bit more fussy, the second one went more quickly, but what I tried to do is hold that hole at the top with my tweezers until it got too far to shrink and then I put my tweezers inside of the hole to hold it down. Now when the shrinky dink or when the plastic is warm, you can help to flatten it out with a stamp block. So you might have to pull it apart a little bit with your fingers and then push it down with the block. I just kept heating and flattening it out until it was the final size of about 46% and I thought everything was nice and flat and straight. The final step was to get these added to the earrings, and having those little hooks on the bottom made it so quick and easy. And once again, you could make multiple earrings and just change them out on the hooks when you're feeling like a different image. Here are some close-up looks at the finished earrings. I hope you enjoyed seeing how I turned one of my favorite images from the Critter Pop stamp set into a pair of cute earrings. If you did, as always, a thumbs up is appreciated. Now don't forget to finish the hop by clicking on that hashtag in the title and good luck in the giveaway. Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye bye.
Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you're interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box.